Hi, I'm Natasha Stott Despoir, Chair of Our Watch, a national organisation to prevent violence against women and their children in Australia, and newly elected to CEDAW, the Committee on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women at the United Nations. I begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which I'm speaking, the Ghana people. I pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging, and to any elders from other communities who may be present or listening today. I also acknowledge all of you who are working for equality and social justice and gender equality. I particularly acknowledge the work of you who work day in, day out to keep women and children safe. Thank you, UN Women, for the opportunity to be part of this event, albeit virtually. Thank you for the good work that you do in Australia and in our region in particular. Happy International Women's Day. Although I know this year it's feeling a little bittersweet. Traditionally, this day is a day to celebrate our achievements, acknowledge our successes and reflect on what more needs to be done. The past few weeks in Australian politics and policy demonstrate there's a lot more that needs to be done. I know the events of the last few weeks have been distressing, confronting, anger-making and triggering for many of us. As a lifelong advocate of gender equality and feminist and someone who's been passionate about getting women into politics and parliament, it has been an awful time. I know that the theme of this is International Women's Day is leadership. It's all about creating equal futures in a COVID world. But we can't do that unless women are reflected and represented in all our diversity and difference in our powerful institutions especially in our parliament. I thought that 25 years on from when I first set foot or set dock in that federal parliament, that the rate and pace of change would be faster. I thought the culture would have changed for the better. So today, an International Women's Day should be used, I think, as a call to action for men, women, non-binary and gender diverse Australians to collaborate together to create and call for change. It's actually time for men to literally give up their seats. Yes, to share power. It's time for quotas. In fact, it was time for quotas decades ago. But critical mass is important, but gender parity is a key part of the puzzle. And it's taking too long. It's time to turbocharge this change. And yes, we need policy and structural change. Cultural change is critical. And that takes time. I know in the work that we do at Our Watch, where we address the underlying drivers of violence against women, that it means changing attitudes and behaviours, and that can take generations, but we don't have time. It's not only a good thing to do, the fair thing or the right thing to do to get women in positions of leadership and power and politics it actually makes a difference, right down to measures as simple as profit and loss. We know that more women in government leads to more equitable distribution of resources. And we know it influences young girls and women to get involved in education and develop skills and income, do fewer household chores, so that they can develop the agency and become more equipped themselves to play a role in leadership and in conflict prevention, particularly in developing nations. But we also know that there is a direct link between women in government and policies and practices that better address violence against women and children. Violence against women in our country is a national emergency. Globally, it's an epidemic. Every two minutes, on average, police attend a domestic violence incident Every week in Australia, on average, a woman dies violently, usually at the hands of someone she knows. This scourge has to be addressed. It is unacceptable. 
And we expect our leaders, the people who run this country, the people who preside over our most powerful political institution, to do their bit. It is time for independent assessments and inquiries. It is time for change as well as structural and policy initiatives. I want to acknowledge the bravery, the strength, the tenacity of those extraordinary women, those survivors who've come forward. And I also want to acknowledge that there are many people who are feeling distressed and traumatised at this time who may not want to come forward. We send you our solidarity and support. The Parliament now has an opportunity, arguably a watershed moment, to create change for the better. Not only to ensure better representation of women, but radical cultural change, so that gender equality and respect is promoted and supported, so that our children get to see our parliamentarians modelling themselves ethical, equal, healthy, respectful relationships. So on International Women's Day, I want you to think about what you can do with leadership, not what's wrong with it. I want you to know that in Parliament, with the stroke of a pen or maybe the flick of a keyboard these days, you can change lives for the better with legislation. Women need to be, deserve to be a part of that. And I know that we're going to do it really well. So International Women's Day this year, it's a call to action. I look forward to working with you all to achieve meaningful, long-term change so that we can see genuinely sustainable and wonderful developments in the opportunities and the rights of women and girls in our country, in our region and around the world. Here's to a reflective and powerful International Women's Day and here's to your leadership and agency. Thank you, everyone. 